Well, you talk about a game that uh, took all 60 minutes, took every second. You know, I think that game could look a lot different if we didn't shoot ourselves in the foot so much. A lot of penalties on defense and offense uh, alike. It could be better on uh, third down in some situations. I thought their quarterback played with incredible toughness. He um, was able to run the ball on us. Right? We, that's, there's some issues walking in. Our team's excited to go fix issues. Right? Some stuff that happened. But that being said, really tough environment to go play in. Right? A lot of teams would have lost their cool when things weren't going well, and our guys kept their uh, composure throughout the game. They were calm and composed. They had a plan for adversity, and they went out there and executed when it mattered down, the, down the stretch. Yeah, what are you thinking of 509 when you get the ball back there? Obviously, you guys go down and score, but just strategically, aggressiveness, what are you trying to do? How much of the clock are you trying to play down? Yeah, once it got inside two minutes, we decided we didn't want to give time back to them, try to take as much time of that off as possible. You know, we were in a situation there at the very end of the game where we wanted to try to get a first down but stay in bounce. Right? Jordan ended up getting going out of bounds. We would have at least made them use that timeout before the last drive. You know, that's there's a lot of situational football that we're really, you know, uh, caught up on that we didn't execute the right way tonight. I um, think we probably could have gone back and thrown for it, but we'd made a strategic decision about, hey, we're going to try to leave them as the least amount of time possible, make them use their timeouts, right? We'll go ahead and kick the win and then be able to play, um, you know, for that, that situation, knowing where we were at. You mentioned that a lot of teams could have handled that differently. When you guys were down 11, what were you focusing on to keep this team just in it, engaged and confident? Yeah, winning's not words, it's action. We're talking about winning the next play. All right, let, don't worry about the future, don't worry about the past, let's live in the present present right now, let's win the next play. Let's anticipate what we're gonna see, right? Let's have a plan to execute well on this play. Um, and there's a lot of moments where we could go execute a lot better, right? But I thought our players did that. They lived in the moment, they didn't focus on outcomes, they focused on the standard, right? What we have to go execute right now, and it put us in position to win this game at the end. Dan, yeah, very few teams have come in here and won. Uh, yeah. After after going 60 minutes like you did, you will, you'll be. You know, what what about this environment makes it so such a challenge? Well, one, their team has a lot of fight, man. Coach McGuire's guys play um, with extreme toughness, and they create issues. They've got some good players on that team, right? They've got, um, I think they're, they're a two-headed monster, they're a different team, right, when they play at home, right? They have a lot of confidence. They feed off the crowd. Um, you know, they can ride momentum waves, and they created some momentum tonight. What, what, what was good about us is we didn't let that momentum stop us, and we, we had to create some takeaways tonight, right? Those takeaways ended up being huge. Um, you know, it was a game where we almost had a critical takeaway for us there at the end. We got to do a better job taking taking care of the ball. Um, but we created takeaways, and they didn't have the takeaways. You know, so that's a place that's going to help us. You talk about penalties and wanting to fix mistakes. How does that look for you as a coach? Is it discipline? Is it encouragement practice? How do you get better with, with not making penalties going forward? Yeah, so they were using like a, a cadence on defense. It was similar to our cadence on offense, right? It was causing some issues with their moves. But we got to go work stems in practice, right? It's going to be something we're going to see the rest of the year. So you know what? We got to become the best team in the world at dealing with stems. They were stem in the front. Um, we were able to catch them on one too, right, when we stemmed the front. But it's something that we're going to drill in our, our guys' heads. You know, pass interference, I thought a lot of those were panics. You know, our guys got themselves back. We talk about this game going in, you know, preventing contested catches. You know, the reality is they made a contested catch on that very first play where they had a holding right down there uh, tight in, our red, in the red area. Um, but outside of that, they didn't make a ton of contested catches. We really bailed them out by giving pass interference. So, you know, we got to be calm, cool and collected. Are we in phase, out of phase, and recreate that in practice? So the best way to, to attack that is to recreate the exact same situation in practice and work it over and over and over, and not until you get it right, but until you can't get it wrong. And that's what we'll do in the future. How do you categorize, you talk about some of those timely takeaways, Stand. There's a different kind of metal to executing in those moments, whether it's the sack fumble, whether it's the interception right after they get a short field, whether it's Boss's interception to seal it. How, what, what do you think it takes in a player for those moments that is just different than a lopsided score and getting a takeaway? Yeah, I just think ultimately we talk about being composed in moments like those moments and making sure that we're able to lean on what our players know the best, right? We're not going out there calling exotic defenses in those scenarios. Like, what can we execute with speed and great execution without overthinking it? And, you know, our guys in those moments were able to execute at a high level because we call defenses we've run a million times. Um, same thing offensively, plays that we've run a million times, the presentation might be different. Um, but in those moments, really, really critical. You know, we talked about going into the game, every sack a fumble, right? Every sack's a fumble. How do you create that attack in the ball? And we drill that every week. We drill, you know, we call it rodeo drill, where we're trying to sack the guy, but we're also trying to knock the ball out. You know, I think a lot of those moments showed up today in this game.
sort of along the same lines, Camden stepping up there with a minute left, 60,000 fans, kind of the moment. What, how do you think he handled that? Obviously he made it, but just his, his composure. Yeah, I talked to him right afterwards in the locker room. He says, Coach, I can't miss that. That's a chip shot, right? I mean, we know Cam is a great kicker. And talk about composure, right? To have the confidence in him to say, hey, we don't have to throw it here on third down to get the first, right? Because we know we have a guy that's going to be able to make this kick and put us ahead, right? For him to be able to pull that off is, is huge. You make a bonus just performance last two drives. I think the second to last one, four third down conversions, you converted them all, just his play overall. Yeah, I thought Bo played really well outside of one play tonight where he put the ball in jeopardy, right? And, um, you know, Bo, he knows that. He's, he was critiquing himself on that. And that's what I love about Bo, right? He's like, okay, I, I know I can get better, right? When your best players know they can get better, what an opportunity for us to grow as a team. Um, but I love Bo, and it's not about what he is as a player. It's what that guy is as a person, right? We have an unbelievable quarterback right now on our team. Right, that is an unbelievable leader, an unbelievable human, and he's a freaking ball player. Right, go pull up that film on Bo Nix and tell me he can't win games. Watch what he did with his feet tonight. Right, good decision maker. Um, just really proud of him and, and glad he's leading our team. How did you feel like the defense performed against Tyler, both on the ground and in the air? Because until about 58 minutes, and three touchdowns, one interception, until things obviously slipped at the end. How did you feel like containing him to the pocket, breaking free for some runs, and, and also? I think when we're rushing four, we got to do a better job with some of our contain. You know, I think our, the pressure that we created the majority of the night it was a situation where we were rushing five. We got some guys that can win up front. Um, we don't need to be a team that has to rush five every time to create pressure, right? And we have some guys that can win. We were doing that. With, you know, we probably weren't great at level rush tonight, right? And uh, he did a great job of taking advantage. We had guys covered. He took off and ran. So I think that's something we can certainly improve. I got to go watch the film and see exactly what broke down. Um, but he ran for too many yards tonight, right? And we got to do a better job there. There were, a lot of, there were a lot of freshmen or guys who didn't play as much last year, like a Jalen Lawrence, who plays a lot tonight. Mateo Tatum, who played last week. What is it about some of these young guys who, it's one thing to do it last week, it's another thing to do this in one of the toughest road environments you're going to see this season. In game two, what, what have you seen from these young guys in practice to feel confident to put them, not just out there, out there for probably the majority of the game? Yeah, if you're good enough, you're old enough. I say it for a year. You know, last year it didn't really necessarily matter because there weren't as many guys that were good enough, right? But we have guys that are good enough to play for us and they're old enough to go play for us, right? And it, it don't, I don't care how old you are, if you can go make an impact in the game, which those young players can, right, that's when we're going to get better. We're developing within our program. We're developing young players to go make an impact in this game. And you know, I don't know how many players we played tonight, but I think we played a lot. You know, last week we played 81. It's not going to be close to that. But we had a lot of guys that go and make an impact tonight. Pass rush was much improved tonight. Obviously, there were many opportunities last week against Portland State, but you got several sacks tonight. Flush shut out of the park a lot. But you see them kind of improve and how do you see them play overall? Today? Yeah, I think overall, a completely different game. Like, I don't think the opportunity, like, if you go back and watch the Portland State game, we created pressure, we didn't get sacks, but they didn't give us opportunities to really create sacks. Tonight, we had some drop back passes that we could take advantage of, and guys got good pressure. You know, still some concerns about losing leverage in the pocket that we can certainly clean up. Um, we probably got to work some more scramble drill in practice. Um, you'll see us do that moving forward. How does, how, does it, how, how, how does winning this game, you know, environment, style, all of that, how does that help you, you know, the rest of the year? And how can you draw maybe this in tough situations in November? The first thing I plan on doing on Monday is going and showing the team all the things that I messed up, me personally. Like, here's the things that I know that I could have done a better job of, and I think you can learn from wins, right, as much as you can ever learn from losses, right? We got an opportunity to go coach our team really hard, right, because there's a lot of things that all of us can fix, right? So for me, it's really simple. We got away. We went and got a W, right, because we have a resilient and a tough team. But, man, guys, I'm going to fix these three things. What are you committed to fixing? What are you ready to go put on the table for your team, right, to make the Ducks better? And that's what I'm really excited about. What were we, were we thinking, I guess, just in the moment where Jeff possesses the ball, he's going? Go down. Go down. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. But, you know, I think there's some, probably some other people in, uh, across the world that are really excited <laughs> that he did not go down. <laughs> Got time for one more. The, How was the experience uh, with the temporary locker room? It was fine. You know, Texas Tech has been unbelievable as far as uh, trip, you know, accommodating for the situation that you know, we have here. Um, you know, they, they will put us anywhere, right? We'll, we'll go line up in a grass field, right? We'll get our shoulder pads, we'll throw them on, give us a helmet, tell us you want to go play on the concrete, we'll go play on the concrete. Wherever you put the ball down, we're ready to go. First action for Evan Williams uh, as a duck. What did you see from him in his performance tonight? Yeah, but highs and lows, right? Highs and lows. Uh, uh, Evan's a great tackler. Uh, he's a phenomenal player. Had a couple busts that I know he wants to have back. We're, we're going to go coach it really hard, right? And uh, it's about recreating those moments in practice. But that guy lost composure at a moment. 
and then he resettled in and became a really special player for our team. Um, did a really good job. So love Evan, love what he's about, and, and really love the direction of this team. Thank you, Coach.